I was dreaming of bigger things and wanna leave my old life behind. You're listening to the Create What You Speak podcast. My intention is to change the lives of one million women, one podcast at a time. Now let's get started. Thunder, feel the thunder. My name is Sloan Fremont, and today I'm going to talk to you about getting what you want easily. Music is a big prayer. To this week's show. All right, so I have a really great story to tell you this week, and it's something I manifested in the most perfect and wonderful way this past weekend, and I'm really excited to tell you the story. I can hardly contain it, but real quick before I talk about that, um, the whole point of this week's episode is to demonstrate how easy something we want can come into our life, and towards the end of the show, I'm going to give you a process that will help you with this. It's going to help with your, your mindset and keeping setting the tone for how your days go. Um, so let's get into it because I've got a lot to tell you. So, all right. So if you saw last week's, the, the uh, description for last week's show, you know I was in Atlanta for an Abraham Hicks seminar. So I talk about Abraham a lot on here and I credit their teaching as really one of the big catalysts that helped me to change my life. And, and that's been like nearly three years ago now, coming up in uh, this, well, around this time, three years ago. And if you're not familiar with Abraham Hicks, you can look at, look him up on YouTube. Um, there are ton, I mean, years, like we're talking 20 some years of content out there with their teaching. But um, if you don't know the basis for Abraham. It's channeled by a woman named Esther Hicks. So Esther is not Abraham, obviously, but they are channeled through her. So, um, so before I came to Atlanta for the seminar, I was thinking about what I could manifest that just might be fun, right? A little far out there. I don't know, just for fun. We didn't really have a lot of like, um, you know, strong, like I require this or I need this. It was more like I was coming from a place of fun. And so I was thinking about the past few times I've been at Abraham's seminars, and I've actually met Esther twice at different ones. And I kicked myself both times because I was like, why didn't I get a picture with her? Like, I love to get my picture with people, and I, I keep it up at my house. And, and so leading up to the workshop, you know, as I was having my conversation with the universe, I said, I want to meet Esther at the airport and get my picture with her. And that was it. That was my request. I want to meet Esther at the airport and get my picture with her. And I was thinking a little bit about that, how that might happen, right? I was like... Could, would that even, is that even possible? Maybe I can meet her in Atlanta because we'll both be flying through there because that's where the, the seminar was. But I really didn't get too into the details of it, right? I just made the request and I actually wrote it in my book about where I talk about my list. Um, that was the show I ran last week um, where I talk about the list of things I want to manifest. And so I, I did write it in my book. I want to meet Esther at the airport and get my picture with her. Um, but then I really just let it go. I didn't really think about it anymore. And so last Friday, I'm, I'm heading to the airport, and I always see famous people at the airport in Nashville. It always happens. It's a running joke with my friends, and because I talk about it so confidently now, I think it's just like the norm, right? It's just the, that's the tone I've set, right? I have that expectation, and I have no resistance to it because it's happened so many times that that's just, that's just the way it goes. And so when I first got, you know, I'm always, when I'm coming into the airport, I'm like, oh, who am I going to meet? Who am I going to see this week? And so almost when I first got there, I saw Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn. And if you don't listen to country, like especially old school country, you're not going to know who that is, but... I bumped to him, bumped into him like four times, like smashed into each other. And this is the same thing that happened to me with Vince Gill at the airport one morning. Like we, I mean, he literally crashed into me, like body into my side. Like it was four times, I think. And then finally I was like, Vince, can we get a picture? <laughs> because this is happening like so many times. Um, but so Ronnie, um, yeah, I'm walking past, I just kept bumping into Ronnie Dunn and I'm, I'm in this like foul, like PMS -y mood actually this day. So I didn't, I wasn't even in the mood asking for a picture. I was just like, whatever, you know, this happens all the time. I'll probably meet him again some other time. And so I'm walking around at the airport and, uh, nothing is really suiting me also, right? Like, do you ever have those days or those, that, those times where it's like nothing is suiting you. Like sitting down doesn't suit me. Standing up doesn't suit me. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. Like I'm just, bleh, I don't know. I'm just, nothing is really, uh, you know, suiting me at the moment. And so 
I, I go through this for a while, right? I'm sitting down and I'm moving seats and I'm standing up and I'm walking over. Do I really want something to eat and do I not? And and so finally I was like, you know, it's getting time to board. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stand before – I'm just going to stand by the gate before it's time to go. And um, as I'm standing to wait there to board – there in front of me walks Esther Hicks. <laughs> she literally walks directly in front of me. And she has sunglasses on, too. So it's not like... And, and I still noticed her. And I'm like, oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I can't believe this. But, oh, wait, actually, I can. Because this is exactly what I requested from the universe. And here we are. Right? Here we are. And for a split second, I almost didn't go up to her. Because I could tell she was rushing. And she had food. And we were getting... You know, we probably had 10 minutes or so before we were boarding. And it looked like they were hurrying off from another flight. Like, they were just like, like, oh, my God, we made it. Right? And so... But then I'm standing there. I'm like, here she is. Like, this is what I requested. So what am I going to do? Let this pass me by again? And so... I'm like, okay, what's the worst that's going to happen? She says, no. Okay, fine. You know, I'm not going to die from that. So <clears throat> so I go over to her, and I, I quickly introduce myself. And, and there was a seat that was open next to her, too. Had there not been a seat open, I don't know if I would have went up to her because I didn't want to be, like, standing over her, like, hovering, you know? Like, this is weird and awkward. And so I go over to her, and I introduce myself, and I sat, and I sat down, and I said, I know you're in a hurry. I'm, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I said, but before I came here today, I'm coming to, uh, to Atlanta to see you tomorrow. And before I came here, I said, I want to meet Esther at the airport and get my picture with her. And she said, oh, well, clearly, that's what we have to do. <laughs> and so she was so nice about it. We got the picture. And, you know, afterwards, I'm, I'm shaking because I'm like, holy shit, like, look at that. Look at what just happened. I mean, this was this was kind of a big deal because at least to me, because it was it was not something common, right? It was it was pretty. I mean, it was we were traveling in the same place in the same plane, I guess, in the same um uh, I don't mean plane as in physical plane. I mean we were we were traveling towards the same goal. But to meet her in Nashville, that was that was way out of what I would have expected to happen. Which is the best, right? It's the best. That the, these are the best kinds of things when the universe delivers you something where you're like, it, it's in a way that you never could have planned, and it's a million times better. And so as we're boarding the plane, I could see because I'm in like a you know 20 or whatever because i have status with southwest so i'm always like right up front and i could see she's in like business class so she's ahead of me and i'm like oh fuck i'm like so i don't want this to look like i'm like stalking her right like and she's traveling with this other woman i guess like our traveling companion or whatever and so i said to myself all right i normally sit in an aisle seat that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take the the first aisle seat i see that um I can put my bag up in the overhead bin on. And so I get on the plane and I'm walking past her and I'm like, I'm, I'm promise you I'm not stalking you. And she's, she's like laughing. She, and she made some comment about like my sweater or whatever. But, um, I'm like, and so I sit down and it's the seat right behind her. Right. So I'm sitting on the plane behind her. Like it, it just, this is just another way like of this manifestation coming together. Right. Like this, this whole, the way this whole thing unfolded. And so so as I'm sitting on the plane there, you know, it's like I'm laughing to myself because I'm like, look at how easy this was for me to manifest, right? Like, look at how easy this all came together it was pretty much zero effort on my part. All I did was show up. And that's how really my whole experience with having examples of how to create the life you want it happened. I mean, it was when I changed my life. Go back. If you have not listened to those initial episodes I did of this show, go back and there's a lot of information in there where I tell this story. But it's like I just showed up. Like I just showed up and it was there. And it kept happening again and again and again. And that's how this was. Like with this exam, this example with Esther, it was like I just showed up and there she was. Like that's it. That's all I did. And so another yeah, interesting part of this whole thing is I ended up sitting behind her, the traveling companion that she was traveling with at the seminar. And when I came back from break, she recognized me and she said, how do I know you? And I said, from the airport yesterday. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so she went on to tell me that they weren't even planning to be on that flight. Like they got the last two tickets to be to be able to fly to Atlanta. And we were laughing about that and like just the way that whole thing was orchestrated and just how like and I had said I had no expectation of seeing Esther in um, Nashville. I thought it would probably the chances would be like randomly in Atlanta, but I never thought about it in Nashville. And so and then again, I run into this woman later, like after the seminar and I'm like, oh my God, like here we come. This is almost becoming too much. This is looking like I'm a stalker and I'm just I'm, I'm not. I'm just like showing up. <laughs> and so so like I said. To me, this is a big deal because it's an example of how easily I manifested something I want. But to an outsider, 
and especially somebody who maybe doesn't know Esther or the significance of Abraham and how, at least in my life, right? It, you know, I mean, it's like, oh, whatever. It was just some random coincidence. But but that's not what matters, right? And, and I truly don't believe there are any co coincidences, right? We're always being set up for what we want. And it's just a matter of are we, you know, paying attention and are we lining up to that? But what really matters in this is what it means to me. Like what this what this communication that I have going on with the universe is showing me. And in this example, how it's showing me it's working in my favor. My favor. And, and that's just it's the same for you. So just like all the things that you want to manifest in your life, what matters it what it what matters is what it means to you. Like how it's showing up to you. Because you have the same internal conversation going on with the universe. And this particular example is 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 such a great significance to me because it's the perfect example of the law of attraction and action. I mean, I made a request to the universe. I wrote it down. I let it go. And there it was. That's really how this happened. And so, so after, after all this happened with Esther in the picture and, you know, I'm sitting there shaking because I'm like, I just, ah, I'm like just in awe of how easily my request to the universe happened. And all I was doing was standing there, but I was standing in the perfect place, right? I, had I been sitting or, or facing another way or in the bathroom, I, I would have missed it. I would have missed that moment, but, but I wasn't, I was there and I was in the pr precise place to see her walk past me and take the opportunity to ask for the picture. And when I made the request to the universe, I didn't go asking for it, right? I wasn't seeking it. I wasn't looking for Esther everywhere I went or, you know, looking at the airport, trying to find her. I, I wasn't really even thinking about it anymore, yet there she was presenting right in front of me. So you can probably think back in your own life and, and come up with examples of how this has happened for you, right? Like maybe, you know, something you've wanted showed up in a way that you were like, oh my God, I never expected that. Or how, that's amazing how that showed up, right? And, and this could be anything. It could be something you deem, quote, small or, or big, right? Because it really doesn't matter. It's the same process for what we decide is small or big. And, and maybe you don't even know how you manifested it, right? Maybe you just thought it was a coincidence or thought it was just good luck. But I guarantee if you look back, you, it's going to be a similar process to what I've talked about in this episode, how you decided what you want, you made the request, you let go, and the universe made way for it to show up. I think sometimes we also think the universe forgets about our request. So we, we feel this need to keep asking over and over again. And this can, it's really easy for us to fall in this begging frame of mind, right? Like we're begging for it because we're asking for it so much that, and, and it's not there. And then we get anxious because it's not there and it hasn't showed up. And so we keep asking for it and we're like, God damn it, universe, where is this? I want this, right? And we get frustrated and uncomfortable. And then we start to blame like, oh, fuck, like I'll never get this or this is never going to happen for me. Or why is this taking so long? And then we get into this victim mode, right? And you can tell when I go through that, have that, that energy about that is, is not the energy that's going to bring what you want, right? It's going to repel it actually. It pushes it away because you're coming at it with this. It, to me, it's a begging. We're coming at it as, as a beggar. And that's not how this works. And that's not how we should live our life or approach our lives. Right? We are not begging for what we want. We can have anything we want in this world. We just have to ask. And when we, ha when we ask, we, we, we need to, you know, we step back and we get out of the way and let it come in. And when we get into that, like if, if we do fall into that begging or that um, seeking or that, you know, frustration because it's not showing up, it's really easy to just instantly go into that path, right? Just instantly fall into that. And then we don't check in with ourselves and, and see where we're at with things and remember that we're the one that sets the tone for how this goes, right? We set the tone. We get to decide what the tone is. So what's it going to be for you? Is it a begging tone? One where you're, please, may I? Or is it, no, I, I've got this. This is mine. I'm approaching this with confidence, right? Confidence and sureness, because there's a big difference between the two. And I can guarantee you, if you feel like the universe has forgotten you or hasn't heard your request, this isn't true. This absolutely is not true. And I say this to remind myself as much as well, because if something isn't manifesting for us, then it's, it's really just a good time to check in with ourselves and see how we're really feeling on the subject and, and to pay attention to the, the tone that we're emitting, right? Like, how are we feeling about it? Are we on this, this paranoid anxiety ridden path or are we stepping back in this tone of confidence of no I've got this this is mine I remember when I was changing my life and going through all of this that I went through and I remember when I made that distinction between begging versus it's mine right a total change in the the approach and in the, in the the energy around that and I remember at the time I was in a group 
law of attraction forum group. And I remember I said that I, I, I posted in the group how I was like, you know what? I said, this is how this is going to go. This is what I'm going to have. This is what I want. And I will accept nothing less. And I remember telling people that and everybody was like, well, not everybody, but people commented and were like, I didn't know we could do that. I didn't know we could come at what we want, requ- like demanding it versus hoping for it. Like, please, may I, you know, with your fingers like, oh, I don't know. Can I have that? You don't know. No. Totally different, totally different energy. So that's an easy way to tune into yourself and see where you're at with things and is to see what kind of tone you're emitting on the topic. And so I want to, I'm going to close out here in a little bit, but I wanted to wrap, or I wanted to touch on something else about how I, about the hesitation before asking um, Esther for the picture when I saw her at the airport, because I didn't want to bother her. Um, my friend Elizabeth always tells me about, you know, she'll remind me that the universe can only take it so far for us, right? Like when it's in our lap, we have to be ready to step up and claim it. And I mean, can you imagine how mad I would have been if I would have listened to that voice that told me not to approach her at the airport? again, right? I'd done this twice before. I mean, I would have kicked myself. I would have been so pissed, right? It's like the universe brought her right in front of me. And that was the job of the universe, right? The universe brought her right there. And the rest was up to me. It's not like Esther was going to walk up to me, tap me on the shoulder and say, hello, can I have my picture with you? Right? I mean, that's not how it goes, right? And I think that somehow we think or we, we, we get to, we, the pendulum swings too far on this topic sometimes. And we think that our desires are just going to come to us and we just sit there. You know, it's going to be hand delivered in our laps while we're just sitting in our living room, right? But no, I mean, that just isn't the case. We have to be able to understand when to act and when it's, when, like, when to wait, right? Like, like, and that happens for most of the things we want, right? I mean, it's, and I've talked about this, this understanding on, on several previous episodes. I think I've, I've touched on it probably many episodes. So if you can go back and listen to any of the 73 shows and prior to this one, you're probably going to get some, some feeling or idea of that, having that conversation. But it, it's really this, um, you know, and that go, that's an internal navigation. That's, that's those little nudges, like go sit here, go stand there, uh, you know, show up for this. Don't show up for that. Right. That's how the universe is communicating with us to deliver the things that we want. And our job is to pay attention. And there's a big difference between that understanding those little nudges and the forcing, like I'm going to make this happen. I'm seeking her. I have to find her. Right. Totally different energy. So I had a picture of this. I had the picture of Esther and I that I took, um, printed it so I could keep it on my desk. And I'm looking at it right now as I'm talking to you about this so I can remind myself just how wonderful and magical the universe really is. Like how the universe does not forget our requests and how, how I created this wonderful manifestation of something I wanted so easily. And having this picture also reminds me that the universe really is on our side, right? It's, it's waiting to deliver us what we want not the other way around, right? We aren't waiting on the universe. In most cases, that's how it seems, but that's not it. It's the universe waiting on us to get out of our own way so we can be, do, and have anything that we want. And so, you know, there's so much more to this, right? I mean, I could talk for hours on this, like most shows that I do, but just some reminders from this example, right? The universe knows what we want and and, and it's going to deliver it to us if we can let go and trust. And this is a perfect example of getting what getting what I wanted. It didn't require a lot of effort. It was just me showing up. And it was, in fact, really, really easy. And like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the things that you want or the things that you think don't matter, they do matter, right? Those little nudges that you get to get up or go stand here or walk over there or talk to this person or buy this or take the train at this time or get on the plane or whatever it is, all of those things matter. Because as long as you're in alignment and you feel good when you're doing those things, you have no way of knowing what path that will put you on for the universe to deliver exactly what you want. And part of that is being able to be in that surprise and delight when the universe does deliver it to us when we least expect it. I mean, I can't even explain to you like my excitement and my sheer like awe of how that was delivered to me with Esther. And we get to set the tone for this, right? We get to set the tone, like this begging tone versus a tone of complete and utter faith and trust what is coming. Even if you can't see it today, there is a, there is massive power in being able to trust and believe, even if you can't see it today and trusting and knowing that it's on its way. And most importantly, when the unit, when the universe presents it to you, 
be willing to go for it, right? Be willing to go for it and step up and claim it as yours. All right, so as you move forward this week, as I talked about on the beginning of the show, I want to give you a process that I mentioned that I use I used regularly for a while and then I forgot about it and I've started doing it again and I, I, I was reminded of how much I loved it so I wanted to share it with you uh, because I think it's very helpful in the manifestation process. So this is something I made up um, part of this year because it worked for me. So if it doesn't work for you, adjust accordingly, of course, as always. But the basic process is this. Um, I, I've talked about this on here before about you know all those thoughts th- swirling around in our head and that there is some value of getting those out to clear that clutter out. Now, not sitting in some of those negative thoughts and just keeping on with them, but just making like sweet, it's like a sweep. I, I picture in my mind like a broom sweeping out dust, right? It's not like heavy loads of dirt you're sweeping out. It's just the little cobwebs that you need to get out of the way. And so th- there's this concept of morning pages where you just do um, free form writing for like three pages in a notebook the first when you first wake up. I didn't make this up. There's a woman that and I, I believe I did a show on this. I can't remember which episode now. But the thought behind this is that morning pages are, in the morning, you're unfiltered. So you're just writing and you're letting go without restrictions. And you're just kind of letting go of some of that junk, getting it out of the way so you can start your day. And so as part of this morning pages process, I created a process that it goes like this. So I take a normal sheet of paper, a notebook paper, and I divide it into four quadrants, right? So I make a line in the middle of the page and a line down um, the middle horizontally and vertically. And so I have four quadrants. <clears throat> and at the top of each quadrant, I have a title. And so the first quadrant is showing up as. The next quadrant is celebrating. The next one is appreciating. And the last one is for the universe. And so let me explain what each of these mean. So the first quadrant showing up, what this quadrant is to me and, and what I use it for is how do I want to show up today? What tone am I setting? So I write, I write words that describe that, like ways I want to feel. What mood am I bringing to the day? And so some examples, and, and I, this is mine, so this may not work for you, so don't get stuck in this, but some examples that I use are like open, fun, excited, like in anticipation, free, confident, willing, you know, those kinds of things. So how am I showing up for the day? That's quadrant one. Quadrant two is celebrating. So what am I celebrating, right? It can be anything because I think everything is worth celebrating and this is not something we often do. Um, And I use this as a way to celebrate with myself. Like what am I celebrating for? Like what for myself? Like what have I done? What's exciting? What am I proud of myself for? And um, that's a really good way to get yourself like feeling good, right? Like what's good? What's good in the world? So that's number two, celebrating. Number three is appreciating. So what do I appreciate today? Like what's, what's making me happy and what am I so thrilled to have in my life, right? Like what's, what's good? What's good in my world? What, what do I appreciate? And the last one is for the universe. So what do I turn over to the universe to handle today, right? Like sometimes I do this when I'm just so sick of trying, trying something. I'm so sick of trying to do something, trying action. And often that's a great indicator when no action on your part is needed. But I use this as my list of, um, what can I give over to the universe and, and trust that my needs will be met, right? Like, like you can look at this as the, this is an Abraham description, but you can look at this as the universe being a, like a manager of your, life. I think if you owned a company and you had, you were the owner of the company, you would have managers do different things. You know, you wouldn't be doing everything yourself. So this is the, you know, what do you want to hand over, delegate to the universe to take over, um, so that you're freed up to think about other things and no longer worry about that. So this four part process is something i personally find very helpful to get my mindset in the right place to start my day. And, and this, I think in turn leads to, it leads to better thoughts it leads to a more relaxed way of living. It leads to letting go. And in turn, this is a way that I think um, I can let things come easily to me. It's a, it's a way to develop that ease about things in life. So try it out. I would love to hear your thoughts on how that worked for you if you made any modifications. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. All right, so that wraps it up for today. I'm going to do a quick recap and then I'll close out the show. So today's show is really all about easy, about letting something into your life that you truly want with very little effort. And I shared the example of how I was able to manifest my picture with Esther Hicks, um, something I had wanted and asked for from the universe and how it came so easily and so unexpectedly pretty much into my lap. (laughs) And, And this example is such a powerful one for me because it showed the law of attraction in action. I made a request, I let go and let the universe handle it. I didn't seek it. I wasn't searching for it. I wasn't clinging to it. 
I just made the request and I got out of the way. And I shared some things that this experience taught me, like the universe really does know what we want and we don't have to keep asking and we definitely don't have to beg for it, right? Getting what you want doesn't have to require a lot of effort on your part. And in fact, it can be super easy. And I think the most important thing I learned through all of this is when the universe presents what you want, go for it. Step up and get it. Claim it, right? And lastly, I shared this four-part process um, that I use to set the tone for my day, which includes writing out how I want to show up, like so showing up, what am I celebrating, what am I appreciating, and what can I hand over the universe to handle. So I really had a lot of fun with this experience with meeting Esther and getting my picture and just being able to talk about this with you. And I hope this example inspires you to go out and, and really, you know, decide, ask for what you want and watch as the universe creates magic for you um, and step up when it's there. All right. Well, I feel like I'm losing my voice right now. <laughs> so sorry if my voice sounds scratchy, but let's talk about songs and then I'll um, wrap it up. So the intro song is called Nightwalker by Trent Moeller. Um, and I really like the like the tone of the song. It's very, um, I feel like I played another song by Leonard Cohen that was similar to this. But he starts out the song talking, he says, music is like deep prayer. It's like a very, um, just, music is like deep prayer. I really, just really, really love that. And actually, I was dancing last night. Um, that's a whole other thing. I need to tell you about our awards for the dance competition. I got sixth place. I was like so excited. I was so happy with that because there was so much, like so much, to, but I'll talk about that on another show. Um, but anyway, I was dancing last night and, or maybe I think it was last night. I don't know. But anyway, we were talking about feeling the music as we dance, right? Like feeling a part of the music with our body as we dance. And so music is like deep prayer. I feel like music, um, flows through us sometimes and our body can respond to it. And, uh, that's a really interesting thing for me. Um, outro song is Soft Diamond by the Shanghai Restoration Project. Um, they do a lot of instrumental. I, I don't know. I discovered them years ago and I, I still love them and, um, really enjoy their, the vibe that they give. So outro song is instrumental. It's called Soft Diamond by the Shanghai Restoration Project. All right, so that's really it. I'm closing out this week on our topic of ease. So I'd love to know what you think. Like, do you have examples of this in your own life? Like, um, if so, I'd love you to share, share them with me. If you want to come on the show and talk about it, I would be happy to uh, introduce that as well. Email me, sloanfremont at gmail.com. My website is sloanfremont.com. Also, I am active on Instagram at sloanfremont. And if you like the podcast, please remember, subscribe, rate, and review so more people can find it. Abracadabra, now go forth and create what you speak. Yeah.